I made a cup of coffee and it's pretty hot. It's just instant, but I'll enjoy it anyway. I just wanted to say hello, and maybe you're having a cup of coffee like I am. I just want to talk about your light. And um, some of you out there have this bright light. They, they're not, you're not even aware of your light. But I'm talking to other earth angels out there that maybe they're aware or not aware that, you know, you you may have to have some of my coffee. You attract a lot of animals. Animals always want to go towards you. Or maybe people are drawn to you. Maybe you probably get a lot of people that want to talk to you and tell you their life story if you're out and about. Some of us are sent here to raise the consciousness of humanity. And it sounds like such a huge task, right? But everything is done in small increments. So if you have an army of those people that are on the path of their spirituality, recognizing that God works through them, right? God works through you to make those connections with others. And trust me, I love my alone time. I love my hermit mode. Just enjoying life. And it's not always like this, you know. It's not always that way for everyone at all times. We are on this, not a roller coaster per se, but our emotions fluctuate from moment to moment based on what you hear, what you believe, what you experience. And as much as you want to be in bliss, be all blissed out all day long, that's just not, um, maybe for some, you can be blissed out all day, but that's in this three dimensional world, in our life right now, in this world, it's, you know, we have to tend to the mundane, the mundane things that of doing dishes or making dinner or going to work or taking out the trash but each moment gives you the opportunity to look at the positive aspect of this chore or this thing that we have to do or that we must do or we should do so Take my coffee, for instance. It is instant. I prefer a nice Ethiopian bean, freshly ground, in a brevet form with um, heavy whipping cream instead of half and half. But this will do. And I'm grateful that I have the water. <clears throat> and... This is Cafe Bastel, not not a sponsored video, but and I drink my coffee black. 
a lot of the times. So I keep on looking outside because it's so pretty and I, I'm drawn to go outside and I will soon. But I just wanted to have a cup of coffee with you guys and discuss more of finding the little joys that you have that, that we take for granted. Like having a cup of coffee, right? And doing things for yourself that is very comforting and very healing. If coffee is not your thing, perhaps tea is. There's a lot of wonderful teas. I know my grandmother, who is 101, she'll be 100. Yeah, she'll be 102. She just turned 101. She'll be 102 this year. God bless her soul. She has all of her faculties. And she told me for the last 50 years she, she drinks green tea. Hot green tea. And she only eats when she's hungry. And I've witnessed that. So, I'm grateful for, for my grandmother and the wisdom that she has and the stories that she's shared with me and the food. Wow, she, as far as food, she's, she's a master cook. That's what she, she did. She catered. She made food from home. So, I really just want to talk about finding gratitude finding, yes, finding the good things, the positive things, the happy things in anything that you do day to day. We, things that we take for granted, take things that we, yeah, things w that we take for granted. You know, you have to look at the glass being half full. And maybe you've been going through some things that it's difficult to see that glass being half full but we don't stay in that energy forever and really it's about deciding of course after you've processed your emotions you decide when you're ready to move forward and a lot of the times emotions hold you back, you know, past, past hurts hold you back because you don't want to go through that same thing. But who says you have to go through the same thing? You've learned, you've learned, if you learn your lessons, then everything is different. Every situation is different. And I'm here to tell you, you know, you have to open up your heart to what God wants to give you. Especially when, you, when you've been through trials in your life. Have some more coffee. What cup is this? You want to really try to bring in the light because it's so easy to fall into the darkness. I've seen a lot of people go in a different direction because you know when you're in that fear mode when you're in that survival mode instead of going to God people start scrambling they're hustling they're hustling and there's nothing wrong with hustling but You want to hustle for the right things. You want to hustle for things that will help you grow, not just to solve the issue temporarily. And that's about changing your vibration. That's about changing your thought patterns. And that's about, you know, belief in yourself, belief that you could overcome. A lot of it's emotional. A lot of people have gone through some 
pretty difficult challenges, whether it was self-inflicted, whether it was it was directed at you by other people, another person, another group, your workplace. But it goes to say that God doesn't give you more than you can handle. And that's the truth. And it's up to us to fix ourselves and fix these smaller situations around our life. Whether it be... Being a better parent, being a better sister, being a better brother, being a better boss, being a better pet owner. And if it's overwhelming, remember, I'm a huge advocate on calling on your spiritual team. The power of a prayer, it doesn't have to be... Oh, I'm going to say my prayers at night. People are stuck on that. Or I'm just going to say a prayer on Sundays. Or I'm just going to pray before I eat a meal. You can constantly pray. And it's free. And it doesn't take a lot of effort. It's really just asking. Asking God. And maybe that's part of it, too, is maybe you, your pride or your ego, doesn't allow you to ask help from others, much less your creator. But as the saying goes, ask and you shall receive. And, I, and I'm going to add that ask and you shall receive to your vibrational match. So make sure that you're aligned with what you want and be very specific. And a lot of that is your feelings, you know. If you ask for another mate, say a new friend or a new lover or a new job, sometimes we're not healed or we're not ready or we're not aligned with that said friend, lover, job, and we get we get that thing that vibrates at the same level as we do. So that's why it's a really important concept. Because people go into relationships, they haven't, I've seen people that are married still and they're not divorced and they go into a relationship maybe with one, two, three other people, you know, dating still and they're not healed from their past relationship and what do you think you're going to attract you have to clear out all that drama all that baggage you have to clear out all all the baggage i mean it depends on what you feel baggage is if someone is still hurt or, and I'm not saying, you know, um, you have to be alone and, you know, figure it out and don't go out until you figure it out. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is really evaluating the lesson from that relationship or that job, what went wrong how 
you can grow from it and make sure that you're healed because it's not fair to go into those relationships or friendships or whatever the situation is when you're you're not healed yourself you can't fully give your heart you can't fully spirit says that you can't fully be present and then if you're given this gift of a person or situation more than likely you might sabotage it because you bring in all that old baggage that you haven't healed into the new so very important concept very 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 important concept and take care of you know get your affairs in order if you have kids especially that are high school age and younger make sure they're set make sure that they're being guided in the right direction make sure you're not letting your life especially if you choose to be a parent because that's the next generation. That's the next, it's, it's what you do. You can't get those years back. And I'm not lecturing anybody. I, I'm not. I'm just saying that. I've seen it. I've seen, I've seen parents that go through divorces or they, the, the parents split up and the children run amok. You know, they have no guidance. They they don't have guidance. And some children are very special and they're able to, even in that experience, if their parents are really um, absent emotionally, or not using their wisdom. A lot of children can adapt. Children are very adaptable. They're, they're, they're very intuitive, the generation of kids, but why not be more involved with your children that you brought into this world? Gifts of God, right? And um, guide them so they can be successful spiritually they can have a foundation with God have a spiritual foundation so they can better navigate their world when they they go on their own Spirit saying instilling morals and values into your children and making sure your morals and values align with the most high. And if If you see friends and those around you, you, you witness this, these things happening. Yeah, it's hard to actually say something because it's really none of your business, but um, just pray for them. Pray, pray that, and pray for the children. Pray that their parents can, will step up. Because a lot of the times 
you know, there is no manual to raise children and, and things happen. Couples split up and a lot of the times the children are the ones that suffer and then they have a hard time having healthy relationships in life. Sometimes they never have a healthy relationship. They get married, divorced, married, divorced. They're not able, and that's fine. You don't have to be married. You don't have to be in a committed relationship. But you really need to, and I'll probably do another video about vulnerability, being vulnerable. I think a lot of people have myself included have trouble being vulnerable in relationships and I'm not saying be vulnerable with everyone you have to use your discernment but when you're in a committed loving relationship friendship siblings what you consider a close relationship, something that you put your energy into consistently, and hopefully it's a mutual thing. It's a huge problem that inability to be vulnerable and there's some people that aren't going to be vulnerable with you they're not going to be honest they're not going to be authentic they're not going to really be trustworthy because if you can't be vulnerable and I mean this on the positive aspect of vulnerability I'm not talking being vulnerable for manipulation. I don't want to talk about manipulation and, and, and trickster type of energy right now. That will be for another video. So, how do we become more vulnerable? You have to use your discernment. How do we use our intuition? Our, in, our intuition, our intuition is is divine. It's a spiritual thing. It's something that you can't see. It's a it's a gift from God. So why not go to God since that's the source of your intuition? It seems to make sense to me. Always question. Because one misstep, I mean, this is your life. And sometimes when you don't discern what's good for you and what's not, who's good for you, who you let in your life, who you let in your children's life, that misstep can change the entire trajectory for you. And for generations, your children and their children. For generations to come. That's how serious this is. Wow. <laughs> that was a heavy conversation. I guess Spirit wanted me to talk about that. I didn't really realize that's where this was going. So, a lot of people don't wear their heart on their sleeve. And rightly so, you can't. There's many instances where you, you, you shouldn't show your emotions. It's not appropriate. Especially to people that don't deserve 
that kind of trust. <clears throat> that kind of really it's it's um if someone opens up to you and shares private information or they show emotions and makes have has that connection and tries to, um, you know, open up and show you who they are. That's an honor to me. And you want to treat that information, you want to treat that person with loving kindness. Because maybe you were the only person they were able to be vulnerable with in all their years. Just so think about that. I wish you could feel like spirit run their energy through my body. It's very, it's so calming. It's so beautiful. It's like a, it's like a meditation, but my eyes are open. yet I'm focused and that's what I want for you I want you to be able to discern and use your discernment and use your intuition in a positive way not a negative I'm not not talking about dark what's in it for me type of energy I'm not about that I'm truly not. Anyone that I let into my space, my energy, I just... I just want positive. I want it to be a match or higher. A match, at least a match or higher. Because some of you are at that point where you don't have time, okay? We don't have time for the nonsense. Because it's all nonsense. Game players, liars, cheaters. People who want to waste your time waste your years, waste your life. Who are they to kick them out, you know? Kick that energy out of your life. You're going to be a better person for it. And you can thank God for that. So, hopefully this message from Spirit helped someone out there. It truly helped someone. If you guys have any questions or comments, definitely leave a comment. You could like, share, or subscribe to my channel. And I'm um, going to finish my coffee. Cheers. And I will see you on the next video.